Our next performer uh, coming to stage writes poetry as well as memoir pieces and essays and short plays. Her poems have appeared in various literary magazines including the South Carolina Review, Louis the Louisville Review, Eclipse, the Baltimore Review, and 13th Moon. The first two poems she'll be reading tonight were published in the last two, those last two journals. She has authored a chapbook called Transparency and has read and studied it at Beyond Baroque and UCLA, as well as with private classes. Nancy is currently working on a collection of essays and poems. During daylight hours, she underwrites high-risk insurance. <laughs> but not tonight. Please welcome Nancy Murphy. is called Betty Poolside. Mm -hmm. She pleads with him to join her in the water, to join her in the water, at first lightly, then with a rising insistence, and he resists. She is unhappy. It is always the same, the woman calling the man to her, wanting to float together in their skin, and he on the edge of falling, regaining footing, then diving in when she is not looking. He is on his own time. <laughs> Betty's beauty strikes me, and I wonder if he sees it anymore the way the world does, how any other man could not say no. I learn they are married one year now. She talks to me in the jacuzzi. I tell her I left my husband because he would not swim naked with me in the dark, in the pool, behind the fence at our house. <laughs> Absence, part one. I choose to live in the spaces carved by the sharpness of your absence. It's not what you think. Neglect becomes me. My desire gathers and elongates so that if our shoulders should touch when we walk, you know, accidentally, the heat in me catches like a burner, and you can see a small opening between my lips where it escapes. Two. My plants are dying a little every day, first the tall palm in the entryway, then the others, one by one, like a slow-moving disease. Plants can be victims. People tell me they may be root-bound, but I'm not that kind of girl. I did what I could with water, but I'm not going to get my hands dirty. <laughs> Three, what is the sound of attachment? I thought I had a cool eye on my portals to illusion, so I didn't expect you to slip in under cloak of kind words, good deeds, and there I was again in the middle of the night, hugging walls, hearing strains of bagpipes, the Irish ones you hold close to your body. Family. We are the mourning daughters, sisters, namesakes, the trajectory of our losses, first a downward spiral like a plane off course, numb months, beginning again, then the cruel betrayals of small things. Permanent markings of loss persist. Grief never dies. Death brings us to life and its very edge. I fear mine only for what pain she will suffer now that I know. Arriving as my mother left, they are forever twinned. With her, I am my mother. With her, I am my mother's daughter. But for her, I would have collapsed into despair. She has earned my protection. We teach our children how to survive our death as we gather to remember, sometimes in cemeteries, with the false promise of life in their relentless greenery, or with the unforgiving truth in their icy winds that day last January. But mostly we meet in kitchens, <coughs> lean in over counters and cutting boards and teacups, and tell the stories. The stories are from a time before heartbreak. The stories are bread. The stories are wine. The stories are how we mourn. The stories are how we stop mourning. Right, the 
last poem. Year of the Snake. Some nights when they sleep, he enters the room, comes between them in the bed. There is space enough. He slides into the warm sheet, slithers over to her side, wraps around her, and gently presses her skin, squeezes the life from her, threatens her with disaster. She thinks this is sexy. <laughs> she has no idea. <laughs> the, stake, the snake stays the night, wanting her dreams. She opens her eyes early morning, feels around for something vaguely unfinished the way night stories can be, but he is gone, pulled back to his own bed, his own woman, with her thick honey hair and soft hips, waiting, wanting to bear children. He has made his choices. He has spoken his vows. Let's meet for coffee, he says. That cafe in the hills, she says, but they never do. She rolls onto her side now, listens for the alarm. When it sings, she reaches her entire body across the mountain of her man and stays there as he awakens and circles her. She holds on to him for dear life. Thank you. Thank you.